or disapproval means nothing to me because you are not looking at me through my father's eyes. Woohoo, girls and men. It doesn't matter what anybody else's opinion is. Our heavenly father, the king of kings, says we are accepted and approved in Christ. We don't have to feel anxious when our spouse is displeased with us. Amen. <laughs> we can turn to the one who loves us and say, Father, what do you say about me? Because I do nothing without consulting you. I don't take on anybody's opinion without consulting you, Father. That's what it looks like to live loved and live free. When the negative opinion comes at you, you turn. Father, I judge as I am told. What do you say about me? Yes, it is. <laughs> Jesus is our example. You know what is so interesting to me? For so many years, I was taught, and it's good, that we're disciples of Jesus, and I am a disciple of Jesus. But I always thought it was his action that I had to follow, okay? I mean, his good works, okay? But what I didn't realize, and until I follow his example of living loved in the Father's good opinion of him, I'll never bear the fruit of what Jesus... You know why Jesus bore the fruit of love, joy, peace, goodness, self-control, the fruit of the Spirit? Because he lived loved and secure in the Father's approval. So being a disciple of Jesus is saying no to the devil when he comes at you and say, I only live by what I hear my father say. When people come against you and say negative things or the world or whatever, we say, I do nothing without consulting my father. I judge as I am told. My father testifies about me and everything he says is true. That's being a follower of Jesus. That's being a disciple of Jesus. Because when you start living in his love, you will bear the fruit of his love. Amen. If you just try to do the kindness and the, you know, return, return, what is it? Return good for evil. I think that's what it is. You know, if you just try to return good for evil, you can try. You can try that but it isn't going to work for you. It isn't. And you could even convince your own heart. Yeah, I'm going to be nice to them because they're mean to me. I know that's what I'm supposed to do. But your heart is still stewing. <laughs> and the only way that heart of yours and my heart is going to be whole and set free is when we take on the Father's opinion of us. When that person's opinion or what they did to us that was evil doesn't affect our value and our worth... And our approval, then we are free to love them unconditionally out of a heart that is secure in the Father's love. I don't have to talk bad about people who talk bad about me. I don't have to name names and tell how bad they were to me. I don't have to do that because I don't have to protect myself. My Father's words protect me. His favor surrounds me like a shield. That's my security, is what my father says. Woo! Again, Jesus says, and oh, I love this verse. John 5, 44, on page um, 64. I love this. Jesus said, how is it possible for you to believe? How can you learn to believe you who are content to seek and receive praise and honor and glory from one another and yet do not seek the praise and honor and glory which comes from him who, God, who alone is God? Jesus was saying, how is it possible for you ever, for you ever to live secure? How is it possible for you ever, for you ever to live the life I have for you if other people's opinion and approval is more important to you than God's? That's what I was telling you earlier. 
The reason why I was insecure here is because your opinion of me was more important than God's. I could never get up here and speak secure until his opinion of me became more important than yours. How could you, uh, you know, some people just, they just, I, and I've been there, so I understand. You want so badly for people to like you. But that, that desire in you if, you, if you're constantly trying to seek people's approval, you'll constantly live insecure because their approval will change from day to day. Depending on your behavior. Or how good you were, or if you did something for them, or you didn't do something for them, or if you said thank you, or you forgot to say thank you. You know, there are so many reasons why a person's opinion of you changes. There is no security in seeking after man's approval. But the father's opinion of you never changes. You can even be bad one day, and he still thinks you're wonderful. And that's the truth because you're in the beloved. You're accepted in the beloved. He has compassion towards you when you fail. He doesn't judge you badly when you fail. He has compassion for you. He loves you. And when we are walking and living in the security of the Father's love, when somebody else fails, we have compassion for that person. We don't judge them badly. We have compassion for them. Why? Because we're receiving the compassion from our Father when we fail. See, if if I live unloved and insecure in my father's, in my relationship with my father, then I feel like he is judging me badly. I don't deserve it. I haven't done enough. God probably won't come through for me. And so I have in my heart this condemnation and this judgment of myself. And what I have in my heart, that brokenness, condemnation, and judgment, I will spill out on everybody I meet. Condemnation and judgment will be the fruit of my life. But if I live loved and I begin to receive the compassion and the love of my Father when I fail, because I do, just like you, but when I receive his compassion and his love and I realize his opinion of me doesn't change, I'm still his daughter He's still pleased with me. He still approves and accepts me. Even when I fail, then I can turn. And to everybody around me, I can have compassion and acceptance and love for them because I received it from my Father. That's what it looks like to live loved and live free. John 8, 14 through 15, 25, 26, and 54 and 55. Jesus said these words. Again, he was being, he was being judged badly, and qu- his identity was being questioned. And this is, what he, this is what it says. Jesus told them, These claims are valid, even though I make them about myself. For I know where I come from and where I am going, but I don't know this... But you don't know this about me. You judge me with your human limitations. Tell us who you are, they demanded. Jesus replied, I am the one I have always claimed to be. I say only what I have heard from my father, and he is true. If I was merely boasting about myself, it doesn't count. But it is my father who says these glorious things about me. If I said otherwise, I would be as great a liar as you. Do you see the confidence in Jesus against people who were coming against that he was the son of God? Jesus said, it is my father. I have told you who I am, but it's not me who was saying these things. It is my father who says these glorious things about me. And what he says is true. And if I said what you said about me, I would be a great as liar as you are. Any other opinion of you other than your fathers, your heavenly fathers, is a lie. 
You don't come into agreement with any other opinion of you other than what your father says. Jeez, I love it. I love Je when Jesus said, it is, if I was just saying, if, if Connie was up here saying, I'm wonderful, I'm good, I'm approved and accepted and blessed and favored, and yep, that's true about me. It would count for nothing. It would mean nothing. But it is my Father who says these glorious things about me. It is my Heavenly Father who says I am favored and I'm valued and I'm blessed. It is my Father who says that in Christ all of his promises are yes and amen. It is my Father that says all things work together for my good. It is my Father who says these glorious things about me. And what my Father says is true. If I was saying this on my own account, it would mean nothing. But there's someone greater that's saying it, and I'm going to agree with him. Because anything else is a lie. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read what the Father says about us on page 65. My beloved, you are the apple of my eye, the delight of my heart, and I am fully pleased with you. My plans are to prosper you and give you a hope and a future. I've equipped you with everything you need to carry out my will. You are forgiven, righteous, capable, anointed, abundantly blessed, highly favored, qualified, complete, valuable, important, and free from all sin. You have the mind of Christ. I fully accept you and approve of you completely. Nothing can ever separate you from my love, your heavenly Father. Woohoo! It is your Father who says these glorious things about you in Christ. And when you live secure in the Father's love, that's what you say about you too. Amen. One of the things that has helped me in my relationship with God and, is to realize that even when I do bad, even when I mess up, even when I make a mistake, his good opinion of me never changes. In the Old Covenant, we see many scriptures where it says that the Father, that God poured his wrath out upon people because of their sin. And because of that, people have gotten a wrong view and image of the Father. They think that because they read those Old Testament stories and that happened, that that's what God is feeling towards them. But Jesus came and he took the judgment of God upon himself. He took the anger and wrath of God upon himself. So that we, his children, would be in Christ and that he would never be angry at us. He would only feel compassion and love for us, even when we do wrong. And one of the scriptures in the Bible that has changed my life is Isaiah 54, 8 through 10. The Father God is saying to you and me, with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Just as I swore in the time of Noah that I would never again let a flood cover the earth, so now I swear that I will never again be angry and punish you. For the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. Woohoo! What does your father say? He will never be angry with you. He will only feel love and compassion towards you. Why? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, you're in the beloved, and the father only thinks good of his beloved. The story in the Bible of the prodigal son is a Wonderful example of the father's unconditional, unfailing love for two sons who did not know who they were. 
two sons he had, neither of them understood their identity and their position. Neither of them lived secure in the Father's love. But this was put in the Bible so that we could see that even when we fail, the Father still looks at us with love and acceptance. And even when we, even, oh, I love this story. I'm going to read it. Luke 15, 11 through 24. There was a certain man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the part of the property that falls to me. And he divided the estate between them. And not, and, and not many days after that, the younger was gathered, the other son gathered up all that he had and journeyed into a distant country. And there he wasted his fortune and reckless and loose from restraint living. And when he had spent all he had, a mighty famine came upon the country, and he began to fall behind and be in want. So he went and forced, glued himself upon one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed the hogs. And he would gladly have fed on and filled his belly with the carob pods <laughs> that the hogs were eating. But they could not satisfy his hunger, and nobody gave him anything better. Then when he came to himself... <laughs> He said, how many hired servants of my father have enough food and even food to spare, but I am perishing, dying here of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and came to his own father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity and tenderness for him, or compassion, another translation says. He was moved with compassion and tenderness for him, and he ran and embraced him and kissed him fervently. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. I no longer deserve your blessing or to be recognized as a son of yours. But the father said to his bond servants, bring quickly the best robe, the festive robe of honor, and put it on him and give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his heat and bring out the fattened calf and kill it. And let us revel and feast and be happy and make merry because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to revel and feast and make merry. I love this story. This son decided to go his own way, decided to take on his own opinion of himself rather than the Father's. I was reading this week in James where it says, um, when we disobey God, we're like a person who looks in the mirror and sees ourselves, but then we walk away and forget who we are. He forgot who he was. He was a king's kid. He was the son of the king. He thought that the world had something better to offer him. He thought that if, if he went his own way and looked outside of the, his relationship with his father, he'd get his needs met. But what did it end up doing to him? He was eating with the pigs. Did the fa was that the father's good plan for him? No, see, most of the time when we find ourselves in a mess, we think, this must be God's plan for me. Look what I'm... No. The father's plan was for him to enjoy a relationship every day, living in his love, enjoying his benefits of being a son. That was the father's will, but the son decided to go do something else. And the son got himself in a mess because sin is its own punishment. When we go our own way, we end up in a mess. But that doesn't change the father's opinion of us. That's why no matter when we decide to wake up, you know, he said he came to himself. Wake up. This isn't working for me. My needs aren't getting met, and I'm not getting what I want. I'm in a mess. I'm eating with the pigs of shame and condemnation and lack and, right? All he had to do was turn, look to his father. And when, when the father saw him coming toward him, it says that the father was had a heart of compassion to him. He ran to him. He ran and he embraced him. He took the shame of the son's sin upon himself. And he said, get the best robe, the robe of honor, and put it on my son. See, the, the son was saying, I'm so 
bad. I don't deserve to be called your son. I don't deserve your blessing. Just let me be your servant. The father would have none of it. He didn't even address, if you notice, the son's sin. He only began to remind him of who he was. Yah, our father, opinion of us never changes. It doesn't matter what bad decisions you've made. It doesn't matter. I mean, how long did the devil try to tell me that because of a bad decision I made, I had to pay for it? I didn't know the truth, but all along my father was waiting for me to turn to him so he could tell me and remind me that I was his daughter. Get the best robe, he said. Put it on my son. Remind him that he is the righteousness of God in Christ. Get the ring and put it on his finger. The ring represented authority and that he belonged to the father. Put shoes on his feet, the father said. They represented sonship. Slaves didn't wear sh shoes. Sons did. Get the fattened calf and kill it. Remind my son that his past is gone. In all of his mistakes, in all of the bad things that he's done, I don't even remember them. They're covered in the blood of Jesus. And he restored him immediately. He didn't have to pay. All he had to do was turn. All he had to do was turn and listen to his father remind him of who he was. And then there was another son who had slaved for his father, who had worked hard who had went to church every Sunday, paid his tithes every week, read his Bible every day, done his devotions every day, sang in the church choir, and he was mad <laughs> that that son who'd been out sleeping with the prostitutes was having a, his father was having a party with them. That isn't right. That isn't fair. I've been doing good. I've been slaving for you. I've been obeying you. The son said, Father, he was angry, he was jealous, he was judgmental, and he was resentful towards his father because his father was blessing this person who didn't go to church every Sunday. I'm telling you, ladies, there's a revelation here because you can be condemned and live outside the father's love or you can be self-righteous and live outside the Father's love. The, the older son said, I've been slaving for you. He saw himself as a servant rather than a beloved son. He was living under the law of trying to gain his father's approval by what he did rather than basking in the love and acceptance that he already had. When he started to tell his father, I've done all these things for you. And look what, you, you've never done this for me. The father, the father didn't say, don't be angry. Don't be resentful. Don't be, the father didn't say that. He said, son, he said, my son, don't you know that everything I have belongs to you? He reminded his older son of who he was. That's how the father responds to us. He reminds us of who we are. We're acting, you know, we, we're living in jealousy or we're, we're making bad choices. We're self-righteous, whatever it is that is bringing pain in our hearts because it does when we when we take on a different opinion than our father we find pain and brokenness but he's there waiting to bring healing and wholeness simply by us embracing his good opinion simply by embracing who we truly are the beloved daughters and sons of god I love this story because the father did not address either of the sins. He only reminded them of their identity. 
Because the Father knows that when me and you embrace our identity, that we're approved, accepted, and loved, and favored, sin will have no power in our lives. When we embrace our Father's good opinion of us, we won't go eat with the pigs. When we embrace the Father's good opinion of us, we won't be judgmental and angry and jealous when somebody else is blessed. When we embrace the Father's good opinion of us, every one of us, sons and daughters of God, blessed and favored, approved and accepted, valued and made whole. We will live secure in this world. Our lives demonstrating the glory of God, his view and opinion of us. We are just like Jesus, ladies. He showed us how we can live secure. Let's embrace our Heavenly Father's opinion because no other opinion matters. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for watching today's TV broadcast. In today's message, I taught from my Bible study, Living Love, Living Free. Did you know you were created to be loved? The core need of every human heart is love. And although we've all looked to our parents, our spouse, our children, and even our friends for value, acceptance, and approval, only Jesus can fully and completely meet the needs of your heart. I invite you to join us on this exciting journey of learning to live in the Father's love through the finished work of Jesus and discover your true identity in Him. Come join us by taking advantage of this special offer. In her new book, Living Loved, Living Free, Connie Witter takes you on a journey to begin living in the unconditional love of the Father through the finished work of Jesus. We live loved and live free when we take on the Father's opinion of us. And we say, Father, I know you love me, and what you say about me is true. For a gift of $20, receive the Living Love, Living Free book and the bonus CD. Call the number on your screen or go online at ConnieWitter.com. If you have been blessed by today's message, we invite you to partner with us. Your monthly gift will make it possible for more people to hear the true gospel of grace. Call the number on your screen right now or visit ConnieWitter.com to sign up as a partner today. Together, we can make a difference and see precious lives transformed and live free in the Father's love. Visit us online at ConnieWitter.com for numerous grace-filled resources for men, women, teens, and children. We offer devotional books for girls, a preschool curriculum for kids, companion CDs and DVDs for our adult Bible studies, and so much more. Additionally, many of our products are available as a download on your digital devices for fast access. Connect with us online at ConnieWitter.com. And remember, it's all because of Jesus.